Hello everyone, my name is uh, Federico Rossi. I'm an uh, environmental engineer and uh, a researcher of the University of uh, uh, Siena and a member of Life Cares Renewable Energy and uh, Sustainability, a spin-off of the University of uh, uh, Siena. In this presentation, I'm going to describe you a little bit our team, um, the services we provide and uh, uh, the aim of the spin-off. As a spin-off, uh, Life Cares is uh, um, a private company that is uh, economically supported by a public institution uh, that is, in this case, the University of uh, uh, Siena, which is uh, uh, very important for all companies like uh, ours who want to uh, rise and grow, especially in this uh, difficult uh, moment. Uh, during the, the pandemic. Uh, so it was a great opportunity for us uh, to take uh, this uh, chance to found uh, a new organization. Um, so eight members of the University of Siena, including me, have uh, founded this uh, uh, company in uh, 2020. Uh, all of us, uh, let's say that we share a, a common vision of uh, how future society should be. Uh, we all think that uh, uh, the concept of, of uh, sustainable development and green energy transition should uh, be uh, fundamental for future uh, society and uh, uh, these topics are uh, currently very important because uh, uh, many countries including uh, uh, Italy decided to invest a lot on uh, uh, them for the post pandemic uh, uh, recovery uh, program and uh, for this reason we think that uh, uh, sustainability including environmental economic and social uh, sustainability may represent a very important uh, um, opportunity for both research and uh, uh, industry so uh, we are very glad to to take part to this uh, radical change uh, with our uh, contribution our team is composed of uh, uh, eight members. We all come from the uh, academic uh, uh, world. Uh, Agdalgisa Sinikrop is our president and an associate professor of organic chemistry. Maria Laura Parisi is the uh, vice president and an associate professor of physical chemistry. Riccardo Basosi is a senior professor of physical chemistry and he also invested uh, very important roles uh, in the um, uh, Italian Ministry of Education and uh, many uh, international uh, research programs like uh, Horizon 2020. Uh, the other members of the team belong to different uh, uh, backgrounds, uh, for instance I'm uh, an environmental engineer, Giuseppe Di Florio is an engineer as well, but Lorenzo Tosti and Elena Busi are chemists and Sabina Jets are, is an agronomist. So uh, this differentiation of our expertise is very helpful for us to, uh, to um, guarantee to our customers the, the right figure to, for their uh, specific uh, uh, needs. Our expertise is uh, mostly related to the research on uh, uh, sustainable uh, energy uh, because uh, in the last years we joined uh, several national and international projects in this field, especially on geothermal energy. There is uh, uh, basically uh, the heat that is produced by the inner part of the earth that can be converted to uh, electricity or heat used for uh, domestic or industrial applications. Uh, this is considered a renewable energy source, even though there are some discussions about that, but it is really important for uh, uh, Tuscany and for uh, Siena as well. Um, Another research field that um, is very important for us is uh, innovative and traditional photovoltaic. Uh, you probably know that uh, photovoltaic models convert solar radiation to electricity. Uh, 
traditional photovoltaic modules are made of uh, uh, silicon, whereas innovative uh, modules uh, uh, try to um, replace uh, uh, silicon with other more common compounds and cheaper compounds, uh, such as uh, organic uh, compounds. Um, energy storage is another important field of uh, research because uh, um, you probably know that uh, that some of uh, the renewable energy sources like uh, solar radiation is variable in time therefore sometimes we can have uh, uh, an excessive production from uh, photovoltaic which may represent even a, a problem for the, the electric uh, uh, grid. Therefore, it is necessary to uh, store this uh, energy surplus and uh, uh, use it uh, when uh, electricity is not uh, uh, available. Um, and uh, in such way, we can extend the, the range of uh, utilization of renewable energy uh, sources. Uh, our expertise uh, is focused on renewable energy research, but uh, thanks to uh, flexible methodologies and uh, software that we adopt, and thanks to a collaboration and an exchange of information with our customers, we can deal with uh, all the uh, industrial uh, processes. So our services are uh, multiple. We can uh, provide uh, the calculation of the environmental and carbon footprint. There is basically the calculation of all the greenhouse gases uh, emissions due to the life cycle of a certain product. Or we can also consider other uh, environmental indicators like uh, the acidification uh, or uh, uh, the ozone depletion or the materials uh, uh, depletion. Uh, for, for this scope, uh, we use a specific uh, approach that is named the life cycle assessment. We will discuss it a little bit uh, uh, later, but uh, uh, I can already say that this is uh, a standardized and consolidated uh, approach. Uh, in case uh, this approach is applied when a system is at the design stage, uh, we talk about eco-design because uh, in such a way the, this, the product we are designing is uh, thought from scratch to be sustainable for the environment and therefore LC analysis are much more effective. We also provide support for environmental uh, audit and labeling. Um, there are several uh, uh, companies that uh, are interested in uh, um, getting an environmental uh, certification uh, because uh, it, is, it can be very useful in uh, certain types of markets. Uh, these uh, certifications are released by specific uh, um, specific companies uh, or specific organizations uh, that use uh, our same uh, methodology. For this reason, we, um, we can provide the support uh, for those companies who are interested in, uh, uh, in getting uh, these, uh, uh, these certifications. Uh, another support we provide is the uh, support for environmental communication because uh, a company who produces uh, a sustainable product for the environment or a university that proposes a um, project uh, that is uh, um, oriented to a sustainability per perspective should uh, um, express the results uh, in the correct way should uh, they should underline their environmental advantages of the product or the project they are proposing and uh, we can uh, provide support for this thanks to our experience with uh, uh, publications and uh, the the, the pub international journals or other uh, conferences um, the last service we can provide is the life cycle costing analysis. Uh, this approach is very similar to the life cycle assessment because, uh, uh, you know, um, 
the consumption of uh, the certain materials uh, or uh, the consumption of energy represent uh, a cost as well as uh, uh, an environmental impact. Therefore, using a similar methodology, we can uh, calculate uh, the cost related to the overall life cycle of a product uh, from the raw materials extraction to the cost for the disposal. Before uh, going into detail of uh, uh, the, the terms and uh, the methodology that I mentioned, I would like to uh, explain a little bit more why we are so much involved in uh, um, sustainable development and environmental sustainability, because we think that uh, uh, our um, the, the, the model of development of our, of our society is uh, currently uh, not sustainable because we are producing a huge amount of uh, waste, the problem of plastics in uh, oceans and uh, in uh, generally in water bodies is uh, uh, well known, but it is still unsolved. And there are a lot of other environmental issues related uh, with waste, such as uh, human and uh, ecosystem uh, uh, toxicity. Uh, Another problem is the huge uh, emission of uh, pollutants. Uh, the problem of global warming is uh, uh, well known uh, and uh, a lot of efforts uh, are done by international uh, institutions and uh, research organizations to, to fight this uh, very big problem. But there are also uh, a lot of other different implications related to the emissions of uh, to the environment, like the ozone depletion or the acidification. So these emissions can change the pH of uh, the uh, environment uh, and get it much more uh, acid. Another problem is uh, the depletion of the natural resources of our planet. There is uh, a, an indica famous indicator is the Earth Overshoot Day. There is the day when all the resources that can be naturally replenished by the planet are uh, consumed. In 2019, this day was uh, July 29. Uh, actually, in uh, 2020, it was a little bit later because the pandemic unfortunately has uh, slowed down all uh, our activities but uh, uh, of course it is not the solution for um, to address the resources depletion the real solution is uh, moving towards a new paradigm of development that is uh, uh, sustainable development uh, one of the main environmental problems of uh, um, development is that it is really demanding from an energy point of uh, uh, view. It is uh, mm, the development requires a lot of energy, and uh, for such reason, uh, the energy consumption worldwide is increasing really, uh, really uh, rapidly. Uh, as you can see from this uh, dynamic uh, uh, chart. Um, there are countries that are running really fast from this point of view, like China and India, but all the countries are increasing their energy consumption. Meanwhile, resources are decreasing very fast and we have to turn uh, the system to renewable energies if we don't want to be out of the energy that we need uh, for uh, the, the development. The consequences of climate changes can be really dramatic. The ice melting, migrations, uh, uh, extreme climatic uh, uh, events, uh, the increase of uh, sea levels, the desertification of a lot of areas of the planet, which uh, determine the lack of uh, water, fresh water and uh, um, of, uh, food, and uh, wars for uh, the, the few resources that are still available. This uh, scenario can be can seem uh, to you a little bit apocalyptic, but uh, uh, actually the consequences are already there. And I'm talking about hurricanes and uh, huge wildfires that represent a risk for the environment, but uh, also for uh, risk for human uh, uh, health, for human life, and uh, an economic risk as well, because uh it is very expensive uh, let's say to uh, recover from these uh, terrible events 
For all these reasons, the uh, environmental, uh, uh, a lot of environmental sustainability programs have uh, uh, growth in the last years. Uh, the most famous example is the Paris Agreement of the United Nations, where 196 countries in 2015 have uh, declared their, inter their engagement to keep the increase of the Earth average temperature below 2 Celsius degrees or 1.5 degrees if it's possible, compared to the pre-industrial um, era. Uh, the engagement of world leaders is very important, but uh, it is not sufficient. It is not enough uh, to uh, win this uh, uh, battle against climate change, and all the people have to contribute uh, to for this scope uh, to uh, to really achieve uh, uh, the goals of the United Nations. Indeed, the United Nations uh, uh, proposed another initiative that is uh, the definition of the Sustainable Development Goals, a list of 17 goals to be addressed by country in order to uh, become really sustainable. Other, a lot of other uh, national and international uh, programs are uh, um, have been proposed at national and international uh, level by Italy as well. Um, according to our experience, uh, the uh, sustainable development goals that we are mostly addressing is the affordable and clean energy, whose main target is ensuring universal access to affordable, uh, reliable and modern energy uh, services. Uh, uh, for this perspective, renewable energies are really important because uh, uh, you may try to think about uh, uh, a remote communities, uh, uh, remote communities uh, in an isolated uh, place, uh, not connected to the grid. In these places, sometimes uh, uh, wind or uh, solar energy are the only abundant resource, and uh, these resources allow to produce and self-consume all uh, the energy uh, needed by uh, these uh, these people another important target is that of uh, related to the energy efficiency because uh, all the uh, energy uh, systems including those based on renewable uh, sources have an environmental impact that is related to their overall life cycle therefore the only clean energy is that uh, that energy that we do not produce. Um, and uh, for this reason, reducing uh, the energy waste, thus increasing the energy efficiency is getting really important. Um, for all these reasons, uh, life cycle thinking is uh, uh, very, very important to uh, address these kind of issues. Life cycle thinking is a general approach that includes environmental, uh, economic and social sustainability. Life cycle assessment is part of this uh, general approach and it is a methodology to calculate the environmental impact of a product during its life cycle. It is already consolidated and standardized by ISO standards, ISO 14040 and 14044 regulations. And uh, um, it is uh, a methodology that allows to consider all the resources consumption and the uh, solid gases and liquid emissions to the environment occurring uh, over uh, the system uh, life cycle. It allows to uh, describe the, the eco profile of a product using several types of indicator. Among them, carbon footprint and water footprint are the most commonly adopted. Carbon footprint particularly is very reliable because it is calculated on a scientific base. Indeed, uh, all the gases that are emitted to the atmosphere are, uh, um, let's say, have a certain uh, global warming potential, which depend on their physical and chemical characteristics. Um, this is... Uh, uh, it, um, the, all these uh, global warming potential of all the gases are uh, calculated and related to a reference that is carbon dioxide 
Therefore, of the, uh, this uh, indicator uh, is expressed uh, as uh, uh, kilograms of equivalent carbon dioxide. Another environmental indicator is the water footprint. The water footprint is, uh, uh, let's say, accounts for all the water consumptions uh, related uh, to uh, a certain uh, product. Let's try to think about uh, agri-food uh, and textile products. When we are eating a tomato, we are also eating all the virtual water that was uh, uh, consumed uh, for this uh, scope and uh, <clears throat> uh, for the irrigation and for washing the, the tomato. Or when we are wearing a jeans, a pair of jeans, uh, a lot of water has been used to wash and to treat the, 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 the pair of jeans. So, unfortunately, the um, water footprint of uh, a lot of uh, countries like Italy are uh, much bigger than uh, what we may expect. Um, in order to give a further example of uh, the uh, life cycle thinking approach, uh, let's try to think about what happens when uh, we turn on a light in our room? In um, uh, when we turn on a light somewhere in uh, uh, our country, the um, a power plant produces some electrons that flow from the power plant to our house across a very long uh, cable. But uh, uh, in this power plant, uh, we are burning fossil fuels. We are burning uh, natural gas. So. This natural gas comes from uh, uh, a wheel, maybe in uh, Russia or somewhere else. So there is a direct connection uh, from the wheel of natural gas to our uh, the, the room that we are lighting up. So this is uh, very representative of the effects in time and space of a simple action like turning on uh, a light. Um, in this slide, I'm going to explain a little bit more uh, life cycle assessment uh, from the ISO 14040 perspective. Um, according to the standards, uh, this is a methodology composed of four steps. The goal and scope definition, where we are uh, uh, trying to answer why we are doing this analysis and uh, um, for whom, and we define all the methodological assumptions that are required for the uh, analysis. The second phase is the life cycle inventory, that is basically a list of all the uh, materials and energy inputs, uh, so the consumption of raw materials and uh, the emissions uh, to the environment occurring during the life cycle of the system. Those um, flows are listed and quantified. Um, the third phase is the life cycle impact uh, assessment. Uh, this uh, uh, stage allows to convert all the amounts that we listed in the previous phase to um, environmental impacts using different impact uh, categories. Uh, this can be done uh, through the product um, with uh, some conversion uh, factors uh, that are named impact factors. The fourth, uh, fourth phase is the interpretation. In this phase, uh, we try to um, understand the message and the meaning of our LCA result that should be coherent with uh, the goal and scope of the analysis. Therefore, the interpretation of LCA result may suggest to the analyst uh, some changes to be applied in the previous steps of the model. One of the dec decisions we have to, um, to do when we uh, design an LCA model is the system boundaries. Uh, uh, the system boundaries include, uh, uh, let's say, we, we have to set all the processes, uh, everything that is included in the analysis and what is excluded. The more general approach is uh, uh, the cradle to grave approach, where we consider all the uh, environmental impacts related to raw materials extraction to the end of life. Uh, 
sometimes uh, uh, this approach cannot be uh, done or maybe it is not reliable because maybe we are considering innovative technologies whose uh, waste management is not yet very clear so we can move uh, to a cradle to gate analysis or um, excluding the end of life or focusing on just one phase or a few phases of uh, uh, the the life cycle for instance the operation this can be done for instance when we compare uh, vehicles that are fueled by natural gas or uh, oil or gasoline in this case maybe we can be focused on the operation uh, of the vehicle because we are just comparing different uh, uh, fuels. Uh, the last uh, option is to perform a cradle-to-cradle -cradle analysis, which reflects uh, the idea of circular economy, where the raw materials extraction are, let's say, uh, reused uh, or replaced by the uh, materials that uh, reach the, the end of life uh, in a, a closed uh, loop. Over the system boundaries, in the goal and scope uh, uh, definition, we also have to define the function of the system. So, for instance, the function of a geothermal plant is producing electricity. The reference flow, that is the main output of the system. The reference flow of a geothermal plant is the electricity production. And uh, byproducts. Uh, um, it is possible that uh, our product system um, has multiple outputs for instance a geothermal plant may be able to produce both electricity and heat the functional unit is uh, uh, of the analysis is uh, uh, a unit that is used to express uh, um, the, the results for instance it should be coherent with the function and uh, if the function of the system is producing electricity the functional unit can be set to one kilowatt hour so the results are expressed as kilograms of equivalent carbon dioxide per kilowatt hour or um, other indicators are all expressed per uh, kilowatt hour. This is very important to compare different uh, systems having the same function. For instance, we can compare a geothermal plant with a, a photovoltaic plant or with a, a, um, um, another wind farm or uh, whatever. Okay, let's discuss a little bit how to show LCA results. Um, there are several ways of presenting LCA results. The first one is uh, using midpoint indicators. All the emissions to the environments are responsible and can be connected for, uh, to different environmental issues like global warming, acidification and ozone deflation. LCA allows to calculate using some reference uh, uh, units these environmental uh, indicators. And uh, so this approach is named the problem-oriented approach. After that, all the uh, above mentioned problems uh, have some effects, have some damages to, to the environment. For instance, we uh, have um, the three damage categories. Uh, damage for the ecosystem, for human health, and for resources. This, uh, um, this uh, way to describe the results uh, is a damage-oriented um, approach, and it is uh, named the uh, endpoint uh, uh, impact, uh, um, endpoint environmental impacts. It is also possible to summarize all the impacts uh, to the environment using a uh, a single uh, uh, score, a single uh, environmental impact value expressed as eco points. That is a unit that, through the normalization and weighting uh, of the impacts, allows to summarize all the impact and damage categories. Uh, moving from the midpoint uh, uh, indicators to the single score. Uh, we are adding uncertainty to our, to our uh, model because uh, every step uh, we use uh, conversion factors that have a certain uncertainty. Even though these methods are all uh, standardized by uh, internationally recognized uh, research um, 
organizations and universities. Um, indeed, uh, it is not possible to really uh, say what are the uh, effects of global warming to the human health in terms of uh, um, number of uh, years of life uh, uh, lost. The choice of uh, the, 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 the way to, to express the results are, uh, also depends on the target audience of the analysis. So uh, LCA results can be used to compare different solutions and determine which ones are the most, uh, uh, let's say, the most uh, uh, sustainable for the environment. So it is a decision, a support for decision makers. Uh, so what do we need to make a life cycle analysis? Uh, an LCA analysis requires several, um, several data. We need some background data uh, that are generally contained in a database. Uh, the most common database is EcoInvent, but there are a lot of different uh, databases. All these uh, databases contain all the background information we need to build our model. For instance, uh, if our customer is consuming a certain amount, amount of electricity, we need to know how what is the environmental impact of that uh, electricity. The amount of electricity consumed by the customer is a primary data. So we need background uh, data to build the model, but then uh, the model is composed of primary data possibly provided by the customer. Moreover, we need the calculation software like Sima Pro that allows us to perform the, the calculations and the life cycle impact assessment. And then the other, the last uh, ingredient of uh, um, the recipe is uh, uh, the technical and uh, scientific background of the LCA analyst who should be able to interpret the results and uh, providing suggestions or for improvements of the LCA models or for the uh, product we are considering. As you can see in the previous slides, there are several approaches to perform a life cycle uh, uh, analysis. Uh, um, the European Commission and the Joint Research Center is trying to provide uh, a unified and uh, uh, a single uh, approach uh, that is named uh, PEF, or um, um, Product Environmental Footprint, or Organization uh, Environmental Footprint, uh, if uh, we are considering the life cycle of uh, organizations instead of products. This method is uh, uh, more uh, specific because uh, the JRC provides some uh, category rules that are specific for different products. So those are the rules that we should follow to perform a life cycle uh, analysis. Um, the JRC also provides a specific database and a specific calculation method. So if we follow all these rules and we use all these tools, um, the European Commission can release uh, an environmental certification that is the product environmental footprint or organization environmental footprint. Here you can see a list of uh, all the products uh, and um, all the sectors that uh, have been regulated by the PEF category rules. And here you have other environmental certifications. Some of them uh, are uh, uh, generic, like uh, the EMAS, that is a European certification, the ISO 14001, that is a world um, international uh, um, certification. We have some uh, certifications related to the energy efficiency of uh, electronics and um, other uh, laptops or other electric components. We have some certification specific for clothes like uh, uh, GOTS or Ecotex or other certifications that are mandatory uh, when we uh, consider the possibility to recycle uh, products like uh, plastics. Um, Ecodesign, I already uh, said something about that uh, when I spoke about our services. Uh, I just would like to add that 
the interpretation is very important in this stage because it is the phase where we try to get and understand the message of our LCA analysis that uh, allows us to uh, really uh, improve the design of a certain product. Life cycle costing, um, as I said in the previous slides, this is uh, um, a methodology that mimics life cycle assessment. Indeed, uh, to perform a life cycle costing, we can use uh, the same eco invent database that also contains data about the economic impact of the uh, products. So, why should we perform? Why a customer should ask us to perform a life cycle analysis? First of all, we have a, a moral reason, a more general reason that. Preserving the environment is uh, something that we should do for ourselves, but for also for future generations, because uh, these environmental problems that uh, um, I listed before really have some uh, huge uh, and terrible consequences. The other reasons are um, we have some more practical reasons that saving energy and resources uh, does not only um, contribute uh, to reduce the environmental impact, but also allows to uh, save uh, money because uh, resources uh, have a cost. Uh, and uh, so it, it represents also an economic advantage. Proposing a sustainable product uh, in the market can be also uh, be very useful uh, for those companies who want to attract customers that are uh, conscious and uh, um, interested in environmental problems. These uh, customers are uh, getting very, very, um, there, uh, there are a lot of customers that are interested in that because uh, the public opinion is getting uh, always more conscious about uh, these uh, environmental issues and their um, terrible consequences. Investing in uh, sustainability is also important uh, to promote and to stimulate uh, innovation. Uh, during the eco-design, we are improving the per environmental performances and the sustainability of a certain product. So we can provide innovative products on the market. And at the end, uh, depending on the legislation of certain nations, we can have different types of advantages uh, from the administrative point of view. In these uh, slides, now we are going to show you a very short uh, summary of uh, some uh, case studies. This is an example of a geothermal power plant, um, <coughs> particularly it is a geothermal power plant at the design phase. So this is uh, an example of eco uh, design. Uh, the eco design, uh, because uh, this system is not uh, uh, already constructed, it is still at the design level. So according to the project, uh, we calculated, you know, we consider all the uh, inputs in terms of uh, resources, energy and materials, and all the outputs in terms of emissions, waste and materials recovered for a second life. The life cycle stages of a geothermal power plant are the exploratory investigations. The, uh, that is a very important phase to uh, really find uh, a place where the geothermal resource can be really exploited. The commissioning that consists on the drilling of the wheel um, to get the, the heat to be converted to electricity and the construction of the, part of the plant the operation and maintenance, the decommissioning, and at the end, the, uh, the recycling and the reuse of certain parts of the plant. Our goals were uh, calculating the eco profile, so all the environmental impacts at midpoint level, studying alternative solutions for the minimization of the impact, and so performing the eco design. As you can see, um, we can uh, uh, we have uh, in this table the midpoint results uh, that are expressed using different uh, units according to the LCEI method adopted, and uh, 
uh, here in the in the third column we have uh, the uh, results uh, for uh, considering electricity as the only output uh, of the power plant we have then a second column where we uh, consider the production combined production of heat and power so uh, basically the approach that we used is to avoid uh, the environmental impact of heat produced uh, burning natural gas so we are we can have actually some negative impacts because we are avoiding the impacts of alternative heat production and then we are, can present um, uh, and compare our results with those of the energy mix so the electricity that we can withdraw from the grid we can see that the geothermal power plant is really um, sustainable from the environmental point of view because uh, all these environmental indicators are um, all the environmental impacts are lower than the energy mix excluding the mineral fossil and the renewable resources depletion that are concentrated during the construction of the power plant summarizing all the um, inputs so all the um, results uh, to calculate a single score we can see that uh, the overall eco profile of a geothermal plant is much more sustainable than the energy mix uh, in Italy. Now I'm going to describe you another example of eco design for uh, PV plants. This is uh, uh, a theoretical, let's say, analysis uh, where we compare the eco profile of uh, a PV plant assisted by storage in several uh, countries of Europe. Denmark, Spain, France, Greece, Hungary, Italy, Portugal, and uh, Romani. Um, for all these countries, we consider a reference energy uh, consumption over the year for a residential user composed of a family um, of three people. And um, um, this parameter, that is the equivalent operative time at full power of the PV plant, that is basically proportional to uh, and representative of the uh, solar radiation availability. I'm not going to describe in detail the equations for the design of the PV system and of the um, uh, capacity of the storage system. At the end, uh, uh, by applying all these, uh, these two equations, we can get uh, the solar home system, so the, um, the size of the PV system and of the uh, battery bank in our PV uh, installation that is named the solar home system. So the following step is calculating the, the, the performances of the um, PV system, namely the uh, how much energy we have to uh, consume from the grid, how much energy we are producing uh, and self-consuming, and what is the lifespan of uh, uh, the energy storage systems. All these uh, um, outputs contribute at the end to the calculation of the eco-profile of our PV system. Um, because uh, the, the environmental impact is expressed per kilowatt hour of output of uh, electricity supplied to the load, uh, to the electric load. So we need to know all the, both the configuration and uh, the performances of the, uh, of the uh, PV system. And uh, EcoInvent is um, uh, the database that we used to perform the analysis. OpenLCA is the software. And then we get the environmental impacts. So uh, we can compare the results uh, for different uh, um, countries. We can see that uh, in uh, Italy, in uh, Romania, in um, uh, Hungary, and in Portugal, uh, the best battery is uh, a battery composed of nickel, cobalt, and aluminum. Whereas in uh, um, Spain and Greece, the best battery is composed of nickel, cobalt, and manganese. Whereas in uh, uh, France and Denmark, uh, the best solution is using the electricity for the grid. So I hope that after uh, showing you, um, let's say, what our life cares can do, um, if you 
have uh, curiosities about that, uh, you can uh, always uh, um, contact and search for our uh, company on the website, uh, Life Cares uh, SRL. And uh, you can, um, if you if you want uh, further details about our services, please uh, contact us. Thanks a lot for the attention.